so I can't promise, oh, Oh, sorry, I just got distracted by the internet. <laughs> uh, product of my own generation. Uh, so I am here to talk to you. Uh, the overall concept of today's uh, stories are where the value lies. And I'm here to talk to you about a very transformative experience I've had at the beginning of this year um, where I finally have found my place in the YouTube community. And uh, so I'm just here to give you my story. It might not be as a, I, I might make more eye contact than John did, uh, only because I didn't do as much pre-planning on writing things down. So let's see how this goes. Um, for those of you that don't know, my name is Grace Helbig. I am a comedic performer, I am an author, I am an actress, but most importantly now, I am a YouTuber. And that has recently come into my resume um, as of, the beginning of 2014. To give you some backstory, I'm originally from the beautiful, beautiful, legendary state of New Jersey. Yeah, people from New Jersey are so proud that we're from New Jersey. I don't get it. <laughs> That's great, a lot of diversity. Uh, and so after I graduated college, I moved to New York City, specifically to Brooklyn, to pursue entertainment. Yeah, someone wooed for Brooklyn. Cool. You have pride too, but just a more subtle pride. <laughs> <laughs> and I realized that I wanted to go into comedy, and I started chasing that through a very traditional route. I was auditioning for TV shows, and for films, and for commercials. At the same time, I was uh, performing improv at the People's Improv Theater. And also at the same time, as a complete and utter hobby, I was making these things called vlogs when I got home at the end of the uh, long work day. Uh, technically referred to as video vlogs. They are what you do, or what I was doing at the end of the day, where uh, my roommate and I would hang out with each other, we'd drink a glass of wine, and we'd talk about our days, but we'd talk about it to a camera. And then we got so excited that we had both taken editing classes in college that we would edit the videos together and put them up on YouTube. And it was just like a, a fun little hobby. Uh, but in 2008, that hobby started to become my career. A website called mydamnchannel.com had seen a bunch of these very amateur videos that my roommate and I had made and they brought me in to experiment with an idea of hosting their website and creating a daily vlog for them Monday through Friday. And my job was to film myself talking directly to an audience and asking them what they wanted to see. Did they check out this new episode of one of their original series? Did they like it? Having a two-way conversation, they wanted their website to not be an art museum. They didn't want to just put up content and have people look at it. They wanted to create a dialogue between the audience. And so for three weeks, that was an experiment. It was a web series called Daily Grace. And two years later, after the experiment uh, had still been going, we decided that in 2010 to put this YouTube or to put this web series up on YouTube. And I kind of like over that time, I had finally found my own voice in comedy. I had finally uh, started moving away from being the tour guide of MyDamnChannel.com and being more of my own independent uh, comedy personality sort of human. And so when we put it up on YouTube, um, it started to kind of take off. People found it interesting. They found my voice authentic. They found my point of views honest. And the audience started to become very loyal. And in 2012, I had amassed um, just under 2 million subscribers, uh, which was amazing. Numbers, stats, yay! Um, but I also at the same time started engaging in the YouTube community and started talking to other content creators and realized that ownership of your content is a thing that exists. <laughs> that can be yours if you have it. And I did not have it at the time. And so I started to feel um, really bummed, really like a, like a poser. I, I felt like every like skater kid that goes to uh, buy a billabong shirt, but he can't do an ollie. And so <laughs> I just, yeah. So I made a decision at the end of 2012 that I was gonna start to negotiate and try and gain back my ownership. 
Uh, by the end of 2013, the channel had amassed 2.2 million subscribers, and that's when uh, the final decision was made that the contract negotiations didn't necessarily work out. We went our separate ways, and I made a choice to go independent. I abandoned two point. Yay! Cool. Yeah. That uh, Destiny's Child song, "All the Ladies Who Independent," really <laughs> resonates right now. Um, so I abandoned 2.2 million subscribers. I abandoned over a thousand videos. I abandoned over 200 million total video views on YouTube, hoping that the two-way conversation I had been having with my audience and, and engaging with, with my audience was enough and that it was it really was real to me and to them. And it was. In 2014, uh, in January of this year, I launched It's Grace. And due to the overwhelmingly supportive um, communication and loyalty of the audience and to the overwhelmingly supportive, uh, voluntarily wonderful community of YouTube. The channel amassed over a million subscribers in less than three weeks. I remember John and Hank Green both posted very articulate and elegant blog posts on their Tumblr. That's a weird sentence, elegant blog posts on a Tumblr. <laughs> <laughs> About There's a lot of things I couldn't say about the split from item channel, but they were able to say it for me and they really supported it and I have a hard time, maybe it's my Jersey pride, of asking people for help and they definitely came out and they helped me and they supported it and they threw all of their weight behind it and they told people to subscribe and so many other people in the YouTube community did too and it made me feel like a truly authentic member of this community and it made me realize the power of community and the power of collaboration and the power of being honest with other human beings. Um, I've been on so many terrible commercial auditions in New York City and being able to sit at home wearing pants if I want to, maybe if I don't want to, and film myself is just really wonderful. <laughs> yeah, one time I went on a Tide commercial audition and it was to play a mom and they brought in actual babies to make sure that everyone was comfortable with babies and I was holding this baby and the casting director was like, are you comfortable with that baby? And I was like, yes, and my entire body was covered in hives. So <laughs> there's a lot that you can't control in traditional media that uh, I found really wonderfully, um, just really great in, in new media. And since the launch of this new channel and since the um, the total complete support of the audience, uh, I've started to kind of endeavor into other areas of media uh, that I think make the most sense for my audience. Anytime I try and create original content, I think about would I enjoy this if I wasn't part of this? I feel very connected to the audience and I feel like we have very similar tastes in comedy and just overall life perspective and so, uh, since launching this new channel, I've written a book that's available for pre-sale. My other two YouTube friends, Hannah Hart and Mamrie Hart, no relation, nor are they in a relationship, uh, <laughs> have created an independent feature film. Uh, we're working on a lot of other things, and one of the most exciting projects is something that I wanted to show you guys today that I think really <laughs> embraces the core of what this entire convention is about, is about the value of an audience and about the value of honesty. Um, and so my best friend on YouTube, Mamrie Hart, and I have today launched a new travel show that is a very interactive, somewhat of a choose-your-own-adventure travel series where we're going across the United States all over the summer and we are asking our audience where we should go, what we should do, and how we should do the things that they want us to do. And so we're really, really trying to bring our audience in with us and uh, feel like they're traveling and having a vicarious experience. And uh, everything that we have kind of created has led up to um, 
I think this concept, I'm really excited, it's brand new, and I brought the trailer with me that hasn't ever, it hasn't hit the, the, the webs yet, <laughs> so I wanted you guys to see it first, and I would love your feedback in just boos, hisses, or yays. Uh, so, uh, please enjoy Hey USA. <laughs> been asking what Grace and I's secret project is. Well, here it is! We're on a glacier! And we're very close yeah, to each other. Much. Okay. We've teamed up with astronauts wanted to take you guys around the USA. First up, Alaska! Check out the trailer! <laughs> Where are you, what are you doing? This <laughs> is more difficult than it looks. See, you fell too, cameraman. <laughs> Eat shit, camera guy. Eat shit, camera guy. <laughs> <laughs> hey, hey USA. USA, it's Grace and Mamrie, and we're going on a trip, guys. We're going across America. <laughs> you bag of <laughs> and we're taking you guys with us. We've never done this before, and we need your help. From the shores of Idaho to the mountains of Key West, we're going to eight cities, and we need you to help us decide where to go and what to do. What's on your bucket list? I want to see a whale. I want to go to the National Museum of Buckets. I want to avoid a panic attack in another state. Not gonna happen. We're gonna be asking for suggestions on our YouTube channel, and Instagram, Vine, Snapchat, and Twitter, and Carrier Pigeon, all the top social media. And who cares what we do because we're not paying for it. So this is our official call to action. And you know, we love some action. So hit us up on the hashtag, HeyUSA, all summer long. This is gonna be fun. Yes. <laughs> Tell me, everybody. I am very excited for Hey USA. I was told to put this on a chair, which I'm now going to do.